When pop culture progress comes under attack by the regressive status quo, we call it a moral panic. And few moral panics are more intense, outrageous, and relevant than the controversy over queerness in kids' media. The attacks began in the 1950s, when homophobic bullies took aim at comic book heroes like Batman and Robin. But as children's media evolved, so did the panic. This time, TV was the target, and under fire were best friends Bert and Ernie and the Teletubby known as Tinky Winky. Moral decay. The sickness of the mind. Upsetting moral effect. Ought to be a law against them. Two eyes and two ears and two noses. Hey, 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 hey you dingaling, you've only got one nose. Two noses. First appearing in the 1969 pilot for Sesame Street, Bert and Ernie are honestly goals. The inseparable pair are the picture of domestic bliss, and it wasn't long before they earned a genuine queer following from a community starved for representation. I don't think there was any thought of their relationship other than they were Laurel and Hardy. As it moved along and, and you know, gay consciousness emerged that way, two guys living together, it was just something that, as writers, we found entertaining. Bert, I wish you wouldn't drink so much, Bert. Well, Ernie, I wish you wouldn't eat cookies in the damn bed! Bert, you're shouting again, Bert. By 1994, the rumors had gone national, as evidenced by a New York Times Magazine article which asked the burning question, are Bert and Ernie gay? The mostly tongue-in-cheek column mentions a Mississippi parents group opposed to the best pals taking part in a touring production of Sesame Street Live. Sesame Workshop, then known as CTW, the nonprofit that runs Sesame Street, were so bombarded with complaints they drafted a prepared statement denying the puppet's sexual orientation. In it, they assured God-fearing Americans that Bert and Ernie do not portray a gay couple and there are no plans to do so in the future. Sesame Street writer Mark Saltzman, who is gay, wished they tried a little harder. Why not do something Sesame Streety instead of this cold, corporate, inept press release that made everybody unhappy, both sides? You know, this was people panicking. What are we going to do? They're calling uh, our, our two guys gay. As the question kept arising through the decades, CTW kept fumbling the ball. You're Sesame Street, for heaven's sakes. Watch the show, now write the press release. I thought the New Yorker cover was sort of the last word. Their gay couple it just seemed such a dead issue. Right, look right in there, Bert. In there? See right in there? Yeah, look a little closer. The two were halfway to becoming legitimate gay icons, but Sesame Workshop stuck with the same canned response, that Bert and Ernie remain puppets and do not have a sexual orientation. It's ugly, and so is Bert's unibrow, and nobody's fixed that. There truly was phobia, in, in the sense of real phobia. A really raw nerve was touched. In 2018, Mark revealed that he wrote Bert and Ernie as a gay couple during his time on the show, inspired by the relationship he shared with a longtime partner who has since passed away from cancer. My partner was Arnie Glassman, the documentary filmmaker and film editor, which is a very Bert kind of job. And I'm writing for Sesame Street, so of course we're being called Mark and Ernie or Bert and Ernie. Sesame Street writer Mark Saltzman just revealed he modeled Bert and Ernie after his own relationship, which was totally brought to you by the letters LGBT and Q. Why didn't anybody connect those dots for all these years? Well, to be fair, there weren't many clues, except for the fact that Mark's partner's name was Arnie. It was just some of our dynamics made it into the Bert and Ernie sketches. Saltzman's revelation was one tiny piece of a much larger interview with Queerty Magazine about his years working and living in a New York City ravaged by the AIDS crisis. It was the 80s in New York and the epidemic was raging and it was harrowing. You go from shooting a funny song or something I'd be really proud of. And, oh right, we have to do a hospital visit. You know, this could be the last time we see him. We better go. Mark's reminiscing was enough to once again rekindle the flames of moral panic. In 2018, the idea of me using any kind of interactions or, or jokes even between Arnie and I, the two gay men, somehow contaminated Bert and Ernie and made them gay or something. The media exploded about it. 
But the petition to let Bert and Ernie marry has spawned petitions to stop them. New York Daily News even wrote an editorial on the subject entitled, They're Just Muppets. It sarcastically asks, why stop there? Why not march Yogi Bear and Boo Boo down the aisle too? As the controversy raged, Sesame Workshop responded with their same stale statement. This time, they were met with real pushback. Sometimes even educational television people need a little educating, and I think they got it there. They sheepishly deleted the tweet and replaced it with one that touts Sesame Street's commitment to inclusion and acceptance, while while doubling down that Bert and Ernie are nothing more than best friends. The diversity and progressive spirit of Sesame Street was groundbreaking for its day, but they still haven't figured out a thoughtful response to the question of Bert x Ernie. Maybe the next time someone makes a fuss about it, and they will, Sesame Street could learn a lesson from the Teletubbies. Hey. Teletubbies is a deeply weird, uniquely British TV show for young children, in which Tinky Winky, Dipsy, Lala, and Poe frolic in a flowery landscape and watch videos on each other's bellies. In 1997, before the series even aired, the UK press held endless debates over Tinky Winky's sexuality, citing his rich purple color, inverted triangle antenna that echoes a gay pride symbol, and his smart red handbag. When the show arrived in America a year later, LGBTQ plus magazine The Advocate immediately declared Tinky Winky a gay icon, and correctly predicted that the same fundamentalists who boycott Disney are going to flip. Conservative Christian Reverend Jerry Falwell, founder of the everything is phobic moral majority movement, published a parent alert in his university's journal. He declared that Tinky Winky's gay lifestyle is damaging to the moral lives of children. It is uh, being perceived by the gay community out there as something good for them. Falwell got the headlines and attention he wanted, but the outcry over Tinky Winky never gained much steam. Falwell blasts Tinky Winky as a gay Teletubby, a headline which cannot be improved upon. The anti-LGBTQ plus pearl clutchers clearly overreached, and their protests were met with well-deserved mockery. Tinky Winky leaned into the rumors in a way that Bert and Ernie never could, and in the years since, the Teletubbies have come to embrace their queer following, not run away from it. It took so long and it's so unfair that generations and generations of kids had to grow up feeling like who they are and what they are is just inherently adult and perverse and inappropriate because it doesn't belong in something that the, the wider world considers family friendly. Mainstream media has made big strides towards LGBTQ plus representation, but even in the seemingly enlightened 21st century, beloved kids cartoons like Steven Universe aren't safe. 